Thank you, Ma Marian, for that <laughs> warm um, introduction. I I miss um, uh, seeing you in person and the rest of our members of the uh, PSM. And I think uh, the PSM as well as uh, the Microbiology Consortium for this opportunity to share with you uh, our research and what I know about the uh, extreme environment. I don't claim really expertise in this. I've been working on this for just uh, for about four years now, and I hope that I can learn more from this as well. Um, and also, this is part of my dissertation in the doctorate program at Tokyo Metropolitan University. So, uh, hi to the TMU nurse or the uh, students from TMU who are uh, here uh, attending the webinar right now. So, this is uh, what I will be sharing to you. Uh, this is the map that we are actually studying in the hot spring environment, and these are assemblages of uh, microorganisms um, in this particular uh, extreme environment. So I will be sharing to you some of the results of our, of our study in this uh, hot spring uh, in, in Japan. And, uh, but before that, I'd like to share to you what are uh, extreme environment. No? Extreme environment um, are believed to be one uh, that uh, one would not expect to find life. Okay, simply these environments are considered um, not normal for human survival. So basically, um, they have at least one physical or chemical property outside the normal range for uh, human survival uh, in terms of say temperature, radiation, pressure, uh, pH as well, as well as the salinity. Later on, uh, Sir Noel will be sharing about the alkali fields, right? So these are some of the uh, organisms that thrive at different temperature and these uh, extreme uh, temperature here, for example, there are uh, what we call extremophiles in there. So in these extreme um, environment, extremophiles uh, can optimally uh, be adapted to this particular environment, such as your deep sea hydrothermal vents. These are examples of our extreme environment. The Antarctic Lake here, it has been shown that there are also phototrophic organisms in this uh, very extremely cold environment. And as well as the hypersaline uh, lake here in, in Canada. And there are other uh, extreme environments uh, that you can you can study even uh, in the Philippines. So I hope that we can we can uh, reach out and and study those and explore those uh, environments. And um, as many of you might also know, that hot springs are a hot spot for micro uh, microbial ecologists or microbial um, or environmental microbiologists like us. So in these hot water, pure purely microbial communities develop with different characteristics and features depending on the different temperature. Here you see the uh, photo of octopus spring in Yellowstone National Park. And this, this one here is a source of the hot water, which is greater than 95 degrees Celsius. Okay, at higher temperatures, say for example, 83 degrees Celsius here, you can observe purely chemotrophic communities that is often dominated by uh, aquificase, such as this particular organism, Thermocrinus ruber. And as it cools down to the upper limit of phototrophy, which is around 70 degrees Celsius here, cyanobacterial growth you know, can be observed. So this one is one kind of cyanobacteria in this particular uh, environment. And a little bit downstream here, uh, phototrophic microbial mats develop with uh, two characteristics la characteristic layers. A green layer on top of uh, the, an orange mat. 
And so this kind of maths we are interested uh, and are currently studying. So what are phototrophic organisms? So phototrophic organisms provide, uh, uh, particularly phototrophic bacteria, provide a continuous um, supply of energy to life in the planet. So this is one of the oldest life forms on Earth. And their ability to uh, use light represent a, a major evolutionary innovation, which uh, secured a continuous supply of energy to sustain life on Earth. Okay, so this is a, basically what we call your chlorophototrophic organisms or chlorophototrophic bacteria, because these are organisms that can synthesize your chlorophyll or bacterial chlorophyll to harvest light and convert this light energy into stored chemical potential energy. So while oxygenic phototrophic bacteria, just like uh, your cyanobacteria and some other pho uh, oxygenic phototrophs and, al and algae, um, provide most of the fixed carbon in the ocean, there are exists a, a phylogenetic uh, spectrum of unoxygenic phototrophs. So these are non-oxygen evolving uh, phototrophs, such as your aerobic and oxygenic phototrophic bacteria, or the filamentous and oxygenic phototrophic bacteria, which can synthesize this time bacterial chlorophyll. So unoxygenic phototrophs are divided into six. Okay, if you look at this, this uh, phylogenetic tree here, uh, they are divided into the six major phyla. One is your proteobacteria, which is your purple photos photosynthetic bacteria. Another one is your chlorobi, which is the green sulfur bacteria. Uh, the chloroflexi group, the green non-sulfur bacteria. The, your heliobacteria, which uh, belongs to f uh, firmicutes. And the recently discovered acidobacteria, Okay, which uh, one of my collaborators also uh, uh, isolated this, um, this, this bacteria, uh, and the Gemma temonagites. So these are actually the uh, six unoxygenic uh, phototrophic organisms in our, uh, that has been discovered. So generally, there are seven phototrophs no, uh, representing the different phyla. Now, over the past decade, scientists have studied the uh, chlorophototrophs found in the alkaline um, siliceous hot spring in Yellowstone National Park in the US. So the microbial mats uh, that occur at uh, this particular environment uh, temp at a temperature of 40 to 70 degrees Celsius. Okay? And this is uh, one is in the octopus spring here, which I, uh, 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 previously shown, and then this is a this is in the mushroom spring here. Okay, so um, they contain a surprisingly diverse array of uh, chlorophototrophs, okay? and this includes the seven uh, bacterial phyla known to uh, to have members capable of synthesizing bacterial chlorophylls, and these are your acidobacteria here, your chloroflexi. Um, um, your cyanobacteria, your chlorobi, firmicutes, and proteobacteria. So um, these include members of the six of the seven bacterial uh, phyla. And um, in our, uh, if you look at this one in the microscope, this, this organism, you'll see uh, this, these organisms here. So it seems like they are jewels, jewels in the hot spring environment. And most of these are actually filamentous uh, um, and oxygenic phototrophs. So you see here the rosiflexus is one. Another is the chloroflexus, which belong to the uh, phylum chloroflexi, most of, uh, most of this that we have, uh, we have seen. And also the uncultured organisms, such as your Rosalenia gracilii here, the candidatus, 
and the Candidatus chlorarnerophilum cor uh, corporosum. So these are some of the examples of uh, anoxygenic phototrophs that we have seen through metagenomic and um, isolation um, procedure or, pro or pro our process. So um, in, in Japan, we have also um, seen some characteristic color of uh, the mats and uh, these organisms can, um, we, can, we have discovered that they grow not depending on the temperature. So this is uh, the Nakabusa hot spring in Japan uh, uh, that have been actively studied for the past uh, few decades. And these hot springs are slightly alkaline also, similar to what uh, to the water chemistries of the mushroom springs in the US. So many researchers have been um, doing some field studies in these hot springs and unravel the uh, different groups of bacteria obtained in these microbial mats. So you see here that there are, uh, it formed different colors. And so we believe that there are uh, different or organisms there and is dominated by phototrophic organisms. So in 2002, uh, a group of Japanese scientists uh, um, investigated on the different mats and streamers that form at different temperature and found the different morphotypes you know, of uh, these organisms or bacteria. And in 2011, a follow-up study focusing on the sulfur metabolizing mat um, or bacteria were done using the olive green, this olive green um, microbial mat samples here, and found to be dominated by the gene, uh, uh, by the by uh, organisms or bacteria uh, belonging to genus Chloroflexi. Now. Um, this Nakabusa hot spring formed a thick and dense microbial mat, as you can see here uh, uh, also. And um, these are dominated by three kinds of phototrophs. One is your uh, Rosiflexus castenholzi here. This is a cross section and a structural model uh, studied by um, my professor uh, Satoshi Hanada. And um, these are dominated by three uh, uh, phototrophic organisms. It is your uh, cyanobacteria, your chloroflexus species here, and your um, uh, rosiflexus castenholzi here. And a, um, in the vivo, um, spectrum or, or, or uh, yes, vivo spectra of each layers. So it shows that the cyanobacterial layer had a distinctive absorption peak of about 670 nanometer here, derived from the chlorophy uh, chlorophyll A. Okay. The brown layer of chloroflexus here, the brown layer, showed a large peak of um, bacterial chlorophyll C okay, uh, at 740 nanometer, while your uh, uh, Rosiflexus Castenholze population possessed no absorption peaks due to uh, chlorophyll A and bacterial chlorophyll C, but it had a distinctive peaks at 801 here and uh, 800, uh, about 878 a nanometer due to the presence of bacterial chlorophyll A. So these spectroscopic fi findings so strongly suggest that light can be equally shared uh, out among the three kinds of phototrophs in the microbial mats without competition in terms of wavelengths to be used for photosynthesis. So we want to further investigate on the stability of these uh, organisms here, phototrophic bacteria in the mat. So we explored this site again, and then um, we investigated on the uh, stability of the phototrophs uh, together with our collaborators. And so here is a uh, video of... Uh,
Um, it doesn't show the video. I'm sorry for that. So this is actually a a, a site now uh, where we studied the the fo the phototrophic organisms in this map. So. Um, let me go to the next slide. So as a model system, ah, yes, it's there already. Okay. So this is the site where we uh, studied. This is a slightly uh, alkaline uh, sulfidic hot spring. So we were able to uh, take samples and we were able to stay in the uh, site for two days to collect samples for 24 hours, hourly, now for our dial cycle experiment. Just uh, for you to see uh, the areas here. So um, this is actually an undisturbed area here. So only researchers can get inside this particular uh, area here. This is the cold spring here. And then um, the hot spring flows from this particular uh, area here and, and down there. So it flows from there. So we stayed in this side. So from here, source water down to this. So we want to study this particular uh, pool here. Uh, so as a model system, we use the phototrophic mass that develop in this, uh, this actually little pool here. Now they are uh, green um, 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 cyanobacterial mat, we call that. So a multi-method uh, approach you know, to study the diversity and activity of oxygenic phototrophs in Akabusa hot spring were used to comprehensively analyze the, uh, the mat uh, community possible in this particular area. So uh, we want to, to know who are there in that particular uh, mat, what can they do, now, in this particular environment, and what do they do at a particular uh, condition? So in this case, we use the 16S rRNA amplicon and the metagenome sequencing to disclose the diversity and metabolic potential uh, of this uh, uh, group of community, um, bacterial community. And as well as, we use the transcriptome and the metabolome to study microbial activity over the, the day. So further, we also um, um, monitor the microenvironment micro -environment and habitat conditions in this particular environment. So all experiments were conducted at the same time. So we stayed in the site for two, again, two full days and sampled the microbial mat as well as monitor the environmental conditions uh, in intervals over 39, uh, um, 39 hours uh, in total. And then samples for DNA analysis were then uh, taken in replicates before and after the dial experiment. So those samples were extracted separately and um, the DNA was then pulled for the metagenome um, sequencing. So samples of RNA extraction are also taken Okay, uh, here um, in triplicates every hour. Okay, and then 20 of the time points were chosen for RNA sequencing with specific uh, focus on the transition times, which such as around sunrise and sunset as well. Okay, so we also sample the metabolites with which we are, are, are currently analyzing. Uh, so uh, this part here will not be uh, part of this, this, this talk. And so uh, from our results, we identified nine principal or major and stable community members, which again, you know, confirmed with the work of uh, Hanada, Satoshi Hanada, uh, that these are dominated by three uh, uh, phototrophic organisms, three phototrophic members based on the average relative abundance from the sequencing methods. Okay, so the three most abundant members, uh, uh, each representing approximately 10 to, to 20 percent of the community, okay, that is your chloroflexus here, okay, and your unoxygenic uh, uh, phototroph, your rosiflexus castenhalsei, and your 
thermocyanococcus here, representing, of course, your cyanobacteria. An additional chlorophototrophs was also found uh, uh, in the mat, and these are uh, believed to be a, a new chlorophototrophic organism. So we analyzed them and uh, mm, compared uh, the 16S rRNA uh, for identification, and then we were able to report this uh, genome sequence now as the filamentous unoxygenic phototrophic bacteria that is similar to your um, candid candidatus rosellenia gracili from the Yellowstone National Park. Okay, so this is the first time that we have the, discovered this particular uh, organism here in Nakabusa Hot Spring. And at the same time, we also found some uncultured mat members, okay, um, in the in this particular some most abundant uh, members of the mat, and we were able to see a similar um, organisms, no, uh, found in the Yellowstone National Park also, which we believe uh, to be a dissimilatory sulfur um, um, reduction. Uh, they have a dissimilatory sulfur uh, metabolism okay? because of the presence, of course, of the dissimilatory sulfur uh, reduction genes in this particular map. Okay? So we were able to report these particular uh, uh, non-phototrophic organisms, which we believe also uh, that uh, is helpful now, in uh, the growth and metabolism of the phototrophic organism, providing the metabolites in this particular map. Also, we were able to see or discover 10 more phototrophic. However, some are uh, not that abundant, but we were able to detect uh, 10 phototrophic community members in this particular map, representing your chlorophyll C, your cyanobacteria, and of course, uh, proteobacteria, chlorobi, and your acidobacteria. So these represent actually uh, five no, of the seven uh, phyla that has uh, phyla that have uh, phototrophic organisms. So add addition, yes, additional. So uh, to further study you know, the in microenvironmental gradient. No, and uh, um, differentiation in each differentiation within this this mat. No, we um, collected samples to study the vertical distribution of this mat. Okay, so we were able to uh, do a, a another uh, or collect samples again, and uh, we were able to um, publish this um, this uh, study. Okay in microbes and environment. So what we did was to collect separate layers of uh, microbial mats no, in order to determine the distribution okay? um, between two um, seasons, that is in May, which is a strong light season here no, in, in Japan, and then the weak light season in November. So again, the same procedure, we separated the layers, we extracted DNA, and we were able to sequence these, uh, these layers. So what we see here no, in the mat is that um, <clears throat> the, the thermocyanococcus sequencing representing, uh, se the sequences representing, of course, your, your cyanobacteria was, uh, similarly abundant in both uh, uh, season. Uh, so uh, the relative abundance, however, in the second layer was relatively higher in May sample, correlating to the longer and stronger sunlight periods. And uh, in the case of chlor uh, Rosiflexus castenholse here, uh, it, se it seems that these organisms actually prefer the deeper, deeper layers in a strong light season in May, here. And um, the relative higher abundance of this bacterial chlorophyll A containing our Cassin-Halsey sequence correlate with the relatively higher light uh, penetration of near infrared light into the dark uh, the dark deeper layers. 
So, but in weeks, uh, light season, it shifted to the upper layers um, to obtain more light in that particular environment. Okay. What is interesting about another uh, organism here is the, uh, the, chloroflexus, uh, the chloroflexus aggregans, which has a uh, strong competitiveness in weak light season. Now, in the uh, anoxic layers here. So as you can see here, you now they thrive in the upper layer in the uh, strong light season, while in the weak light season here, you see that the chloroflexus aggregans thrive more in the lower uh, layers of the mat, indicating a strong competitiveness of this member in the winter compared to the summer months. So, uh, the low oxygen production during weak light season might have allowed this organism uh, to shift to the anoxic niche. And the preference to the deeper layer here, the deeper layer here, uh, could be attributed to the presence of the chlorosome. Compared to your uh, Rosiflexus casinholsi, this particular organism contain the chlorosome actually uh, where they can capture light even at low uh, irradiance, which is an advantage, of course, in the weak season. So in addition to the light conditions for uh, each season, we were uh, interested in the light conditions within the mat. So because that's where the microbes live. So we were wondering how much and uh, what kind of light do they, uh, uh, do they have or available for photosynthesis. So when we look at the light quality of the different depth and the light spectra okay, reaching down you know, there, we can observe that not all light actually are absorbed equally over the map. So the wavelength in the visible light okay, is absorbed um, uh, strongly you know, around this 500 you know, to 500, 625 uh, or, or six, and 675 nanometer here, um, which indicates the presence of photosynthetic pigments, such as your chlorophyll uh, A here and the phycocyanin, which are typical pigments of cyanobacteria and thus conforms with the presence of these oxygenic phototrophs in the upper layer, which I previously mentioned. Okay. On the other hand, the longer wavelengths are less strongly absorbed. As you can see, that the infrared light is still present in uh, one um, uh, millimeter depth at rates of approximately 20 to 80% of the initial surface intensities. And is uh, therefore, still available to the community members living deeper in the mat. But here too, some wavelengths show stronger reduction. Okay? For example, approximately 743 nanometer and around 800 uh, nanometer, which indicate the presence of bacterial chlorophylls A and C, no, uh, A and C, now, and therefore, unoxygenic phototrophic bacteria are also um, in the first 100, one millimeter of the map. Okay? So it uh, correlates uh, strongly in, with the uh, uh, light absorption here. And together with our collaborators, we use the microelectrodes uh, uh, to measure the uh, in situ oxygen concentration as well, because we want to determine the microenvironmental gradients and niche differentiation based on the oxygen concentration. So these microelectrodes actually can measure the, um, the wide range of activity, the pH, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, and even other um, parameters. No? Uh, let's see if I can play this, this one here. Okay, so, um, so we see here that, uh, um, that the measurements taken at uh, uh, 52, um, I see here, okay, so I can already um, 
play it. So you see here that when where measurements are taken uh, every 50 to 100 micro uh, micro uh, liter oxygen concentrations, they slightly increase within the first layer of the uh, uh, first 100, one millimeter in the mass compared to the overlaying water here. But it strongly decreases uh, below in deeper layers of the mat. So this indicates slowly starting oxygen production by cyanobacteria in the upper one millimeter and oxygen respiration in the layers beneath. So this decreasing abundance of cyanobacteria correlates well you know, with the oxygen concentration measured by microsensors. Okay, so this markedly shows uh, the decreasing concentration of oxygen towards the bottom layer of the map, which become an oxy. Okay, over a dial cycle, also, we see here that the production of oxygen could be observed in daytime, you know, which uh, uh, we observe in the, in the dial cycle experiment that is mainly due to the oxygen producing cyanobacteria. So the phototrophic mat uh, serve as a model. So this is uh, the proposed model that we have based on our study on the vertical distribution. Now, so this will serve as a model system to determine the population dynamics in this uh, particular micro, micro environment. So we elucidated here the diversity and depth uh, dependent distribution of the microbial community members, especially the phototrophic organisms. Okay, so, and despite the changes you know, in the season, we identified a stable community. However, they also change in uh, niche. You now they differentiate in niche and in the micro environmental gradients um, in terms of light and oxygen concentration also. And since we are also interested with the gene activity over a dial cycle, so uh, we use the uh, C aggregans uh, because this, this particular organism here, your chloroflexus aggregans, is very interesting uh, because they are a motile organism and they can move you know, from one area to another. And so uh, they are mostly competitive in the uh, anoxic uh, dark environment here. So we want to know what's the uh, activity of this organism based on the transcriptomic uh, analysis. So what we see here uh, in, uh, as an example of this particular um, model, now we see that C, uh, C, uh, C aggregate here, the genes are some, are, some genes are less transcribed uh, uh, during the aerobic light, no, um, aerobic light condition, while some show highest transcription level no, at night time. So in the case of some photosynthetic um, genes, um, they are less transcribed during the aerobic uh, conditions and show highest transcription during the transition times, uh, especially in the uh, dark times. So for the, for the bacterial chlorophyll, they are mostly synthesized in the dark times. Okay, so using this particular model, we were able to propose a dial growth modes of this particular um, um, organism in the cyanobacterial mat using the uh, metatranscriptomic and microsensor analysis. And so we thought that uh, this particular organism only um, have one lifestyle. Uh, but eventually, we were able to see that they, ha they, are, they have a, a flexible metabolic uh, um, mechanism in this particular environment, okay, where they can be photoheterotrophic or photomexotrophic in the midday, while it can be fermentative or chemomexotrophic in the, uh, the nighttime, in that case. So... Uh, uh, so far, uh, we, these are uh, the results of our study. So um, we are continually working on the metabolome of this so that we will know, know what are some of the uh, metabolites that we can see and uh, elucidate more and uh, the, 
the mechanism of these or uh, extreme extremophiles in this particular environment. Okay, so I hope that I was able to spotlight no, some of the important lifestyle of these organisms, especially the phototrophs. And so um, we were able to determine the stable core community members, no, especially uh, that is predominated by phototrophic members. And then they were, we were through metagenomic approach, we were able to infer the metabolism, such as the phototrophy, the sul, uh, sulfate reduction, and some aerobic uh, respiration. This is an ongoing um, analysis of the metagenome. And lastly, now we were able to uh, reveal the flexibility, especially of chloroflexus, the model organism chloroflexus aggregans, over the dial cycle. Uh, as from this lifestyle of the organism, I hope that we, um, in these trying times, we learn from this organism to uh, be illuminated even in the dark times. Thank you very much and thank you for uh, the, my mentors in the lab and uh, the rest of our um, collaborators, as well as the Microbiology Consortium um, of the Philippine Society for Microbiology for this opportunity. Thank you.